Hello and welcome to video 5 of our course on converting paper-based data to electronic data using AP Data. My name is Wilfred Ngwa. In this video, we will look at three main things. One, the other tabs in the variable properties dialog box. Two, how to create a relational database. Three, how to generate a codebook from your created form in AP Data Manager. At the end of video four, I suggested you practice by creating the questions in the initiation section using the codebook for this exercise. If you did that, you should have something that looks like this. We will be continuing our course using this design's initiation form. I have shared the link which you can use to download this form in the comments section. Once downloaded, you can go to File, Open Project, navigate to where you have the project stored on your computer, select it, and open. Watching video 1 to 4 before coming to video 5 will ensure better follow-up and understanding of the series. That said, let's dive right into the business of today. In video 4, we saw that to create a question, we click on the question type icon on the work toolbar and then on the work canvas to display the variable properties dialog box. We can also display the variable properties dialog box of a created question by double clicking on the set question. On the variable properties dialog box, there are four tabs. The first tab is the basic tab, which is where we attribute basic properties to our question or variable. We cover this tab in video four. The second tab is the extended tab. This tab is an extension of the basic tab and has three subsections. The first extended subsection is the automatic value subsection. It has the repeat last value and the default value attributes. Once you have the repeat last value attribute checked, the question on a new record will automatically hold the value for the previous record. The default value subsection permits you to define a default value for your question. This value will be displayed for this question on each new record, unless you make an edit. The second extended subsection is the value label setting subsection. With the show value label text after value entry checked, data entered into the data field for this question will be displayed as a text to the right of this question during data entry. With the always show pick list during entry checked, the value labels dialog box for this question will be displayed during data entry. The third extended subsection is the comparison subsection. The section permits you to compare or place a restriction on the current variable with respect to another variable. We know that the diastolic blood pressure is always less than the systolic blood pressure. So, we can set a comparison on the diastolic blood pressure question. The third tab is the JOMS tab. JOMS are used to define whether, based on the value in the current field, the next field is to be bypassed or not. In our exercise, if the response to the diagnosis of diabetes question is no or not recorded, that is 0 or 9, we want to jump automatically to the question on case type of diabetes. To do this, we double click on the diagnosis of diabetes question to open the variable properties dialog box. Click on the jump stop and then on the plus button on the top right hand corner to set our jump criteria. For the first criteria, we set the jump value to zero. For the go to field, we select our question on case type of diabetes. We set the reset value to leave as ease. What we have done here is, if the value for the diagnosis of diabetes question is zero, then go to the case type of diabetes question. To set the second jump criteria, we do the same by clicking the plus button and setting our jump value this time to nine. The other fields are the same as we did earlier. The fourth tab is the calculate tab. This is used to perform calculations on questions. It can be used to perform time difference calculations, create a date, or combine text fields. Let us use the time difference option to automatically calculate age from date of birth and registration date. To do this, we go to the patient's date of birth question and double click to open the variables dialog box for this question. Click on the calculate tab and select the time difference option. 
Under the result section, we select the question where we want the result of our calculation displayed. In this case, auto age. For the first date, we select registration date. For the second date, we select date of birth. The time parameters are of no interest to us in this situation. So we leave the default none option. We now click on apply and we are good to go. The fifth and last step is the note step. What we write into the note step for a question will briefly pop up if the cursor is in the field for this question during data entry. In our question on NCD number, we can leave a note for the data entry person. We saw in video 4 that a relational database is two or more single data forms linked together by one or more variables. In our codebook for this course, we have identified three variables that will relate our initiation form to our follow-up form. These are the patient NCD number, the health facility, and the registration date. Note that it is impossible to create a relational data form without defining at least one variable that relates to the parent form. To define such a variable or key, right-click on the initiation form, select data properties, and then click on the key tab. Click on the plus button to create a drop-down menu from which you can select your key variable or variables. Note that each key variable is selected on a single line. Once you're done selecting your key variables, click on apply. We can now create our relational form, in this case our follow-up form, by selecting the initiation form in the project tree and then clicking the plus button on the work toolbar. As you can see, we have a new data form with the key variables. We can now rename this data set as follow-up form and then create the questions in the follow-up section of our codebook. Please practice creating these questions in the follow-up section of our codebook. It is not uncommon to make some changes in the codebook you made at the start of your project during the actual designing of your forms in AP Data Manager. As such, at the end of your project, it is important that you generate a final codebook which you can use during trainings, data analysis, etc. To generate a codebook directly from AP Data Manager, click on Document, Report Structure, and then Codebook. You can have the option to have your codebook as a text or a website or HTML file. For now, we leave the default settings and click OK. As you can see, our codebook is nicely generated for us. We are at the end of this video. Please complete the rest of the questions in the follow-up section of our course codebook. The link to downloading the codebook and other course material is shared in the comment section below. In our next video, we will look at data entry using the AP Data Entry Client. Until then, please stay safe. Bye for now.